King Henry VII is the first coin in a 21-coin series now from the Royal Mint, celebrating British monarchs. It's a really interesting coin series that has split opinion, but it does seem like this series is actually performing quite well after release. So let's have a good close look at it. And unfortunately, there is a little bit of damage on my one. So we'll talk on that a little, but otherwise let's look at and celebrate this very cool new release from the Royal Mint. Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here, and a very warm welcome to you all joining me for this week's edition of In Focus Friday, the show where we take a good close look at cool things made of silver and gold. And today we are going to be having a look at the latest series from the Royal Mint, the Henry VII, which is the start of a 21 coin, yes you heard that right, 21 coin set over five years of the British monarchs, starting with King Henry VII. And it's a pretty cool set, pretty so cool concept, I have to say, and it's one that has split opinion quite significantly within uh, the stacking community, collecting community, and does it impress? That's the question that I'm asking myself now it's here in the flesh. Yes, it does. I'm very excited about this coin and this series. I think it's going to be good. However, I think there are a lot of not so good things about the series too. So we're going to talk about those and more as we go, but here's the coin itself. It's very, very different from your regular proof coins that you get from the Royal Mint. It's harking back through history. Now, there is going to be an elephant in the room on this coin. Unfortunately, there is a little bit of a ding, and uh, that is always not fun. So you can just see it uh, just to the right of the, uh, the king's forehead there. That little spot is actually a ding and a dent, and then there's a little second one further along as well. So quality control, again, from the Royal Mint, not being as good as it could be, which is a bit a little, little bit annoying, to be quite frank. Um, so it leaves me with an interesting kind of quandary right now. Do I keep this one and have, uh, you know, one that's not perfect, but kind of still have one at that mint issue price, or do I go out and send it back and run the risk of not having a replacement or getting another reject that's come back in for my replacement, which might lead me to have to buy one at a premium on the secondhand market. So it's a bit of a frustration to have that issue, but I don't really want to dwell too much on the quality control. That's a problem for me to work out as I'm sure many others will have as well, but hopefully we can look to get it all sorted and have a 21 coin set over five years. So it's gonna be celebrating all the different monarchs uh, throughout history. And there's a great deal of uh, different methods by which people can uh, collect this series. They could target different houses, different dynasties. They could have the whole 21 coin set. Uh, I'm personally going to be shooting for the 21 coin set, but only in one ounce silver. Because the problem with a 21 coin set is that all of a sudden it becomes quite expensive if you're targeting the gold. Now they did have a one ounce gold version, which was sitting at two and a half thousand pounds. But even at that, you'd be spending over 50,000 pounds on 21 coins, assuming that the price of the coins didn't increase year on year, which they likely will do with inflation and gold prices increasing. So uh, yeah, that's a lot of money. And even more so when you look at the two ounce gold, that has happened as well. And also there's the five ounce gold, the five ounce gold. If you collected every single one of the five ounce golds, you'd be spending the better part of 300,000 pounds, I reckon, with the increases on prices of coins over that uh, lifespan as well. So very, very interesting to go with a 21 coin series over such a short period. It is a big commitment for anybody. And I like the uh, analogy that a lot of people on the silver forum are mentioning that having the one ounce silver, and by the way, they do have a two ounce silver and a five ounce silver as well, but having the one ounce silver is the economy ticket on the this flight and we'll see where it goes. Personally, I don't feel that these would be, uh, you know, a major risk in terms of potential loss. Of course, any proof coin does have its potential losses, but I do think this is going to be a really interesting and eclectic series. Of course, the style here is very different to a modern proof coin and it's nice and refreshing to see that coming out. Matt, finish! I've been saying it for years, matte finish is what is very nice on coins, and this is a great one, barring two little dings there, which will hopefully just get uh, a new coin and not have them on. But matte finish is definitely the way forward for the Raw Mint, and I think it is a beautiful way to present a coin. And it's interesting as well that we've got on the other side the regular queen with uh, the nice proof background too. So really interesting contrast to see the sort of proof shiny, matte finish there, and I do like it, I think it's great. Now they're being very historically uh, accurate in their reproductions of these coins, so you'll see that there's like 
these little extensions of the rim or the indents into the rim there. That's all part of the coin design before anybody thinks, oh god, it's a mist stamp. Uh, because of course back in the day when these coins were made, uh, it was all done by hand, by hammering, hammered coins. So you'd have two blanks either side of each other, the metal inside the middle, and then you'd hammer it down and that would be your coin. You get one try at it, some were off-center, some were not. And to be quite frank, the coins of the day were not going through the same kind of rigors that were uh, that are now for modern coin production. So you did get a lot of the off-centered ones and not quite so lined up ones and things like that. And that's part and parcel of the coin. So the Royal Mint's been quite good in trying to replicate that with obviously a modern uh, coin technology method. So they probably laser engraved the dies and then created the uh, the coin dies from that and then they are stamping normally. They won't be hammering these coins but they will be using their usual methods but with just a slightly different designed um, coin die. So you can see even down here we've got the uh, like little indents into the, the dotted rim of the coin which is I think quite a nice sort of hark back to those history times. In terms of the actual coin design it was an interesting one. So when I saw it for the very first time I was a little bit on the fence about it. I was like, is this something really for me? Um, you've got to admit, admit that King Richard VII was really not the most attractive looking gentleman on the planet, but um, you know, that, that is what it is. It's a coin from uh, six, seven hundred years ago now, and it is uh, very, very much harking back through history of the design of coins, which I think is going to be interesting. And what I think will look good over that course of those 21 coins is you will have this um, this sort of look at the evolution of coin design and coin manufacturing over that time, which I think will be really quite fascinating and quite interesting too. Now, the only other kind of thing that I'm uh, looking at and thinking right now about this coin series, 21 coins uh, is going to be an awful lot to collect for storage. 21 of these boxes is certainly going to take up uh, its fair amount of space. Uh, it's a first world problem to have. Oh no, my proof coin boxes are taking up too, too much of my storage. But, um, you know, it is going to be what it is. I think it's going to be a nice series. I hope that I can get uh, a replacement for this coin directly from the Royal Mint without having to go to the secondary markets. It's an interesting one, the, the dilemma, the, the quandary. And I would always say to people, um, the best option is to send a damaged coin back to the Mint. If you get something with a ding on it like this, uh, you know, it is going to affect its potential resale value down the line. How much it will affect it, I don't know, but I would always say if you've got something with an imperfection like this, send it back to the Mint to get a replacement. The quandary in question though is if they don't have any replacements, will they mint a new coin? Probably not for a one ounce version of silver. Um, so you run the risk of them not being able to give you a replacement, which means you just get a refund and then you'll have to go to the second hand market for these coins. Now, an interesting kind of uh, approach for these is the second hand market is doing exceptionally well already. And that's surprising a lot of people, I think. Uh, it's not by any means a uh, three graces affair. We're not looking at uh, Una and the Lion massive prices, but we are looking at, you know, a couple of well, 10, 15, 20% on the golds over their issue price right now. And for the one ounce silvers, they're doing quite well. They're almost sort of, in some cases, doubling their money. So the prospect for me to go out and buy one of these from a secondhand source would be a little bit of a, uh, a shame if we can't get a replacement. But that's something to factor in for the future for me. I would hope that the Royal Mint will be able to source something that's better than this because these two little dings are unfortunately quite obvious i saw them straight away when i when i got the coin out it's always disappointing and you know raw mint quality i've moaned enough about it i don't really want to go on too much more about it but it, it you know it is a shame it is annoying um it's just one of those things though so hopefully we can get a replacement and i'll share the updates on those but i do think it's important to continue to push back to the raw mint and say look you know this coin is not perfect give me a better one please so that's the king henry the seventh i will keep you guys in the loop about the replacement as it comes uh, if you have any comments or thoughts on this series, are you buying them? Have you bought them? Are you going to get all 21? Are you on the first class ticket with a golden version? Or are you going to be on the economy seat like me with a one ounce silver? It would be great to know your thoughts down in that comment section. So please feel free to let me know what you think. And if you've enjoyed this video, please do hit that thumbs up. It really does help everything that we do here on our channel. Otherwise, that is it from me. A big thank you to you all for watching. And we'll see you on the next one. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more. 